Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, get connected with Creative Cloud Libraries. One of the huge benefits of working in the Adobe ecosystem is applications talk to each other in file formats. Forever Illustrator files could go into Photoshop files, could go into InDesign files, and Photoshop could go into After Effects, which could go into Premiere Pro and audio from Premiere Pro, go into Audition. I think you get the idea. The stuff is everywhere. But we had to manage this stuff, usually in a file system on the desktop, and uh, it can get quite troublesome, especially for something really quick. And then on top of that, how do you collaborate and share with all of this stuff? Well, Adobe Creative Cloud Libraries helps with all of that. It's gonna help with my projects that I'm doing right here on my desktop in my uh, closed system, but also help me to get connected to people that I need to collaborate with. It's in all the ad applications you wanna use, so let's get started and have a look. All right, this is the opening start screen for Photoshop, and you'll see on the left-hand side, library. So when I click here, I can see the libraries that I'm connected to, and if I click to uh, expose my library. You can see all the elements over here on the right from color swatches to color themes, character styles, brushes, graphics, and looks. You'll notice that some are grayed out and some are available. Now, I said that that file formats work back and forth together, but there are obviously some things that don't work. Vector brushes from Illustrator only work in Illustrator. Pixel brushes in Photoshop work in Photoshop. So if you see something grayed out, it's usually because that specific format doesn't work. Um, but let's go look at, at some of these formats. I'm gonna actually open a document. And when you open a document in Photoshop, you get the option of creating a new library from the document. And below that, you'll see the things inside that that document has. For instance, this particular document that I have behind me has character styles and colors. There are no layer styles or smart objects. If I click on this create a new library, and by the way, you can tell it to not show it, but if I click on create a new library, over on the right, it uses the document name and it's put those things inside there. So I can now use those anywhere else. So character styles, I can use those over in InDesign, in Illustrator, anything that I can, can get the style of the text out. Now, one thing I have to admit that, that uh, I like to do sometimes is I like to push the envelope and not just choose the things that Photoshop thinks are important to stick in the library. What if I want everything? I want every layer in here in a library uh, object. So that's a little bit trickier, but I wanna show you how. So first, let me get rid of this stuff in here. And you can just select it and delete it. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm gonna select everything in this document. And I've got the Move tool, and I've got Auto Select Layer on. And I'm going to select all of my layers. So I select the top one, hold the shift key down, and I've selected everything. Now I'm gonna click inside here and start to drag on one of these objects. And you'll notice the whole thing starts moving. And as I move over to the right, you can see that the library understands that I'm bringing this in. So when I let go, it's in, and notice on the right-hand side, there's a PS badge in here, meaning that this is a full Photoshop file. How do I know that? Well, let's do this. I'm just gonna create a new document and watch what happens when I drag this out. The whole thing comes in. And if you notice down here in the bottom right, it's a smart object, but it has a little cloud in it. If I double click on this, it's now opened up in another panel and all of my layers are back. Ooh, I like this one. Full layered Photoshop file with all the goodies inside it available to any of my applications through Creative Cloud Libraries. I like that. But let's go over and look at the actual libraries panel itself. And you'll see down at the bottom, this is the library from document. When I click on that, I'll get the exact same dialog box I got before. And we can also click to add the graphic. So when I click on that, it adds the whole graphic. Wait a minute. Does that add everything just like I did before? 
Well, that's pretty cool. That's a lot easier than selecting the layers. And then you'll notice some things like add character style and add layer style effects are grayed out because I don't have those selected. So if I went and selected this and added a drop shadow and click OK, now you'll see add layer style, click, boom, and I've added that layer style. I love this one because a lot of times people perfect a drop shadow look and instead of always having to go and, and change it or save it as a style somewhere else, um, you can have it in your Creative Cloud Library. So remember, this Creative Cloud Library is not only here, it's out on the web. How do I know? Well, if we click over here, we can choose to view on website. So when I click on that, it's going to load me up. And here is my library that I just made. And if I go back out, and here's my original one that I had open, the colon library, you can see all of the elements are inside here. Absolutely fantastic. Let's jump over to Illustrator. And Illustrator is doing the same thing. There's my library. There's Colin's library. And you can see a number of things uh, available. Um, and I'll create a new document very quick. Drop this in. And you can see some of the things that I had in here, like these. You'll see this is vector. This was actually captured with one of the mobile applications uh, from an image that converts it to vector and bring it in here. Now I've got an Illustrator, which I could colorize and drop into another application. And I could drop this back into the libraries and share it somewhere else. Let's go over and look at InDesign. So here's InDesign with some text selected. Here's my library. So if I go to the place that I had the character styles, if the text box is selected, when I click on the layer styles, it's changed and it's also brought up my panels for character in paragraph style. So as I'm clicking on this, you'll see it changes. And it's changing again based on this style. So if you'll notice the overflow and hyphenation, that's because some of these styles were saved with, with very large uh, point sizes. Let's go have a look at uh, Premiere Pro. Now, here, here's one that just blew me away, and this had more to do with looks and collaboration. I was working with um, a photographer who had shot a video, and um, I was helping create some, some looks for them. And I thought the best way to do this, especially for someone who comes from Lightroom, with Lightroom, you're probably going to be very familiar with the Lumetri color panel in Premiere Pro. But I thought, well, what if I created looks created a library, shared that library, and gave it to them. And that's exactly what I did. When I was working on each one of the looks that I had over here on the right-hand side, over on the left in my library, you'll notice the button over here, add a look. And when I click on it, it adds the look, and I can name that whatever I want. And this library was shared. How do I know it's shared? Well, you can see the little icon right there. And anytime you want, you can share a link uh, with someone else. And when you click share a link, you'll be brought over to the Creative Cloud and create a link. And, and here it, it can make this public. It, I've already created this link, but all of these looks are available. So when I gave this to the uh, photographer, all they had to do was uh, accept that shared link, open up Premiere Pro, and literally drag and drop the looks from the library directly to their clips. I mean, damn, that's so much better than here's an EDL and look at this, or here's my giant project. They already have the clips, um, so why not just share it that way? I'm going to have lots more tutorials on real workflows between these applications. As I said, some formats are going to work, some aren't because, I mean, you don't have vector brushes inside uh, Photoshop. So. Whew, I hope you find that interesting and useful because that is crazy and I'm loving it. Um, and thanks again for all of your support here on Video Revealed. We really do appreciate it. If you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.